hello friends welcome back to my channel i hope all of you are doing well so guys in today's video we'll see how we can upload artifacts through nexus how we can create declarative cicd pipeline in jenkins for maven based application we'll build test deploy application to tomcat server using jenkins cicd pipeline step by step so let's start our today's video Okay, so in this video, we will discuss uh, about Nexus, what Nexus is, and then we'll discuss a bit introduction about what build tool is. Then we'll discuss about Maven, one of the build tool. After that, we'll discuss that why we need Nexus, a repository manager, and how it is different from source code repository. And then we'll see Tomcat installation, and then we'll deploy a sample application to Tomcat. Okay. So in today's video, our main topic is Nexus and what Nexus actually is. Nexus is a software that is uh, given by a company that's a Sona type, we can say. It is a repository manager that organizes, stores and distribute artifacts. Sona type Nexus repository manager basically provides a center platform for storing build artifacts. So we'll see what this artifacts is because we mainly listen this term so many times so we'll we'll discuss that what this artifacts and what all things considered to be an artifact so it is different from github which is a source code repository where we place our source code but on nexus we keep artifacts which actually is the build that create after compilation and testing of source code so on github we place our source code but once we'll perform compilation testing of that uh, on that source code then the product that comes to us is the tested software now so that will place on nexus which is an artifact that can be used by development team whenever they need any type of uh, deployment or something if we want to test uh, the tested build if they just want to get deployed to server they can pick it from there and then they can perform some kinds of testing over there so testing also have so many types like once we build any uh, war or once we build any artifact using the source code at that time we perform j units related some testings but once that build is created and then we deploy it to the server after that we perform testing like some kinds of load testing and some kinds of performance testing so testing comes under several categories so the tested code that is present on your nexus repository can be used by developer in order to perform load testing and then your performance testing on that particular build so this is basically the difference between github and your nexus repository manager that github is having the source code which is the raw code that developer create but nexus is having the build that is the tested build that got generated from that source code so example of artifacts considered like tar file war file zip file so the product that comes after build is basically an artifact and we can also call some images and some kind of documents also they can consider as to be artifact so in today's example our artifact is a war file so we'll see how we can create that and how we can upload that to nexus and how we can use jenkins in order to make this process automate okay so nexus uh, what nexus uh, we can say in case of nexus there are multiple um, kind of categories provided in case of creating a repository so there are three types of repositories in nexus for each build and package manager tool so we can either use maven we can use npm and there are other examples available in nexus so each category is having three types of repositories that we can create over there one is hosted one is proxy one is group so in maven we'll have all these three in npm we'll have all these three so these three will comes for all types of different build and package manager tool. So all the above three types are used according to the requirement. So group is basically the combination of hosted and proxy. So we'll discuss these three repositories in detail later in our slides. Okay, so uh, this I think we have discussed. This is discussed. Okay. So next we need to discuss that what are the build tools. So build tools are commonly known as programs that automate the process of building an executable application from source code. So as we discussed earlier that source code is present on GitHub 
and after performing testing and packaging there will be a product that is an executable that will come to us which is basically an application which we deploy on server because we cannot directly deploy source code that is in the raw format directly to the server so we need to firstly build that source code in order to get that complete bundle of the package which is now in executable form and can be deployed to server so this particular build result is now our artifact and this artifact will send or will store to nexus so this building process includes activities like compiling linking packaging the code into an executable form and there are multiple build tools available in market like apache apache maven apache ant gradle but in today's example we'll use maven as a build tool okay so now let's discuss what maven is maven is one of the build tool that is based on pom pom is basically a project object model it mainly used for java based project developers provide a source code and also the test cases along with this file which is known as pom.xml so everything is written in this pom.xml file like which tool is used for which purpose in order to achieve goals of software development lifecycle model so maven reads basically this pom.xml file and resolve dependencies of the project maven validates if the dependencies are available locally or not if not then it will download those dependencies from internet first and then it will keep them store on local machine and whatever is the def definition of every plugin in maven configuration in pom.xml all those plugins will get download so for example suppose if we are compiling our code so that compilation piece requires some dependencies so when we'll compile our code so all dependencies will first get download and then our compilation stage will get success similarly in case of testing there are certain different kinds of other plugins or what we can say dependencies are required in order to test that code so firstly that code related dependencies will get download and then we can perform testing on our source code similarly we can perform packaging of that application which basically an application or war we can say so that will also require certain dependencies so those dependencies will get download first from internet and then we can perform packaging of our source code so this was basically the maven and if we come to software build process so there are multiple phases during software build process so different tool is used for each phase which tool we need to use everything is defined in pom.xml so we can say this pom.xml is the heartbeat of uh, this complete uh, build creation because everything is defined in this pom.xml and this pom.xml is provided from development team side and we need to configure our tools according to this particular pom.xml that what all tools are going to be used so dependencies will be according to that particular pom.xml we'll build one sample application also and we'll use following tools in order to achieve following phases so for compilation some gcc compiler may get used here there may be some other tool so we just need to focus on this pom.xml everything is defined here but in pom.xml that we are going to use today so for code review they are using some pmd for test cases they are using junit for test case report they are using surefire code coverage they are using cobertura and for packaging there will be an application.wall get generate once that source code is completely compiled and tested so these tool may get differ for different code so this is basically the structure that we usually use in case of software build process okay so now let's come to our main topic that is basically a nexus repository so it is provided from sona type so we can say nexus repository is basically from sona type so there are three types of repositories available in nexus for each build package manager tool that tool may be either maven npm or etc so that i'll show you once we'll do it live so there is first repository that we can say is the hosted repository so this is basically a repository where we store our artifacts like tar war zip images or anything related to that artifact this is private to organization and not publicly available so once you'll work in your organization or once you'll work in any organization on live project or something so these are not publicly available so company make them only available privately so that only organization people can download these artifacts so that it is not available to everybody else outside and our application.war post successful build always be placed here 
so advantage what is the advantage of using this uh, repository advantage is that fully tested and versionized build will always be available in this particular repository so if anybody want to get perform some kinds of load testing or some kinds of performance testing they can simply download it from this nexus repository manager can deploy on their respective server and then they can access the application and can perform testing and second thing is proxy so proxy this is basically a repository which is linked to a remote repository so proxy is very very important because proxy is mainly used in companies and in live projects and I'll, I'll show you why this proxy is required and why we keep it as a mandatory factor when once we'll work in live projects so this can also be called a mirror to your report repository usually an organization each machine cannot access public site so these machines reach out to public site using a proxy so this is basically that proxy and then that content or dependency which is fetched from remote public repository is now stored in local repository as cache next time when similar kind of request will come so it will be served from that cache what is the advantage of using this proxy it saves time and network bandwidth for each similar request okay now we are coming to the third repository that is group repository so this repository itself do nothing rather it's a combination of these two other repositories so it's a combination of hosted plus proxy repository and advantage of using group repositories that no need to give an individual url for your hosted and your proxy rather you can give a single url in the configuration so that it can work for both hosted and proxy so what is the structure in organization as we can see in this diagram that there are multiple developers they are not directly downloading any content from internet because in organizations access to public internet for the machines or virtual machines that you are using is completely blocked because any any malware or anything can come from the public sites that's why we configure this proxy in between so any developer who is trying to compile his code or test his code so firstly it will point out to a proxy repository which is configured in your nexus and then that proxy repository in backend is connected to the actual site from where we need to download the content so developer will not get content directly from there but company set up their own external repositories from where we can download the content only we are not allowed to download anything from internet so in this way developer will connect to proxy proxy will connect to the remote repository it will download the content keep it as cache and then developer can perform their task okay so in uh, this above picture also where i have uh, shown this arrow so here we can see just like if your hosted url is 1234 colon 80 and your proxy url is 1234 colon 80 and slash proxy so the context route is different like in case of hosted we are having slash hosted in case of proxy we are having slash proxy so group url will be 1234 colon 80 slash group so in configuration we'll pass only this group url which in backend will get connect to these two url so proxy is basically to make a proxy connection and to get download content and hosted is basically the place where we'll place our artifact that will get generate post build completion okay so here we'll see how we can create a repository in nexus so here in this slide we can see this is basically the nexus portal so we can click on this uh, setting as we can see highlighted setting and then what we can do we can just put on repository after that we can click on create repository and then we can select in our today's example we'll use this maven hosted repository so as we discussed in our previous slides that each build tool will have three types of repositories here so one is group one is hosted one is proxy so group url is mainly get passed to configuration in live projects so it will get connect to both hosted and proxy but in today's example we'll use this maven to hosted repository only and we'll we'll see how we can upload content to this particular repository so there are multiple repositories related to build tools available like docker like npm so everywhere you can see like we are having group we are having hosted and we are having proxy okay so then once we'll click on a particular type of repository uh, this particular page will come in front of us where we need to give firstly the name of the repository 
and then we need to select uh, in case of maven we need to select that which type of artifacts does the repository store so today we are going to use a snapshot one so we'll select this snapshot and we'll keep all this option default as it is and once uh, we'll scroll this page down in the end we'll see one create repository button we'll click on it and our repository will get create just like we given a name test repository so it is created here and it is of type hosted it is of maven to format and it is showing as online so it means it is available and we can use it okay so here we can also create certain users in our nexus so what we need to do on the left side we need to click on users and then a new page will come in front of us we can click on create local user and then we need to provide these information like uh, what is the username first name last name email password confirm password status and after that we need to assign role to this particular user so in this filter option we can search any role like if you want to give any read role if you want to give any kind of admin role modify role so there are multiple roles available in this nexus repository manager console so we can select any of that role and can assign to this particular user so that we can restrict any user to do a particular thing that we want this particular user to have only this kind of authorization so we can control access to this particular user what this particular user can access what it cannot so we can set it here so in this way we can create user here and just like i have selected in this slide nx admin once it is selected we need to click on this right side arrow so that this role should come to the right window and once it is getting there then we need to click on create local user so this user will now have an x admin role that is basically a nexus admin role for this particular user is granted now okay so this was the thing that how we can create users in nexus so right now we can see that test user has been created and realm is default and its first name last name email everything is getting shown here in this way we can create any user in nexus once this user is created and if we'll go to the roles section so here we can see by default there are two roles that are provided here nx admin nx anonymous so these two roles we were seeing once we'll create a user but if we want to create a role then we can click on create role and then we can select what kind of role it is then we can select role id role name role description after that we can provide what kind of privilege this particular role should have so in case of read we are seeing so many read permissions so we can select any one permission here and once we'll done with that then we'll see that particular role is visible here so in this way we can add multiple role so that whenever we'll create any user these all roles should get reflect and we can select it from there in order to save some time for that role creation piece okay so this is basically done in case of nexus there are so many other things in nexus but as a devops perspective we mainly do these kinds of things so that i have covered and we'll see practically how we can upload artifacts so once i'll do practical then i'll show you step by step uh, where these artifacts will get stored what is the procedure how we can create jenkins pipeline everything i'll show you once we'll do the live demo so now let us understand uh, what is there in software code that is provided by developer so this needs to be understood first so that we should aware that what is provided from developer side and what we have to do from our side in order to automate this process so there is one source folder and there is one pom.xml file inside source folder we are having two other folder which is a main folder and test folder so main folder contains java source code and test folder contains test cases so here in the snippet also we can see there is a source folder inside this we are having mail folder and test folder and we are also having one file pom.xml so we'll discuss what is there in this pom.xml file so let's go to next slides so in this slide we can see that this is basically our pom.xml where everything is defined that what all dependencies are required and what all plugins are required in order to achieve certain thing so here we can see just like pmd plugin is required for that code uh, review piece related to that and we can see here that in the testing section we need j unit in order to make that testing happen so firstly j unit plugin needs to be 
getting there in case of reporting we need surefire plugin it is required so everything is defined in the similar way in your pom.xml file and we just need to configure or we just need to we make our uh, configurations according to the pom.xml whenever we want to create anything so these dependencies has to be there so whenever it will get download directly from internet then there is no issue but when we need to configure proxy then in that case we need to keep all these dependencies in mind okay that what all things are required in order to build the code so that will get set up over there related to this pom.xml file so we we don't need to get worry everything is there we just need to make uh, maven commands so that all these plugins should get download accordingly so let's understand now that what maven commands do we need to execute in order to build the code so firstly we'll perform mvn compile command so it will generate a new folder target under that folder we'll be having classes inside classes folder we'll be having compile code of dot class files second command we need to use is ambient test so it will generate target surefire hyphen reports folder where it will be having all test case related reports inside third command we need to run ambient package so it will create a example.war file which is basically our artifact that will store to our nexus repository and uh, then we'll deploy this particular tom uh, artifact to tomcat server so these are the mainly command in case of maven that basically we are going to use and there are multiple other commands but we we don't require uh, for this example so we'll cover using these three commands only okay after that we need to understand what apache tomcat is so those who are aware about it so it's a bit easy because it's a very old tool so it's easily understandable but those who are new don't know so i'll try to explain uh, that what's the installation means and what it is basically so apache tomcat is a popular open source web server and servlet container we can see for java code apache tomcat by default run on 8080 port so we need to open this port from networking section following command we can use in order to install tomcat server so one thing we can see here that tomcat run on 8080 port and one thing is that jenkins also run on 8080 port so if we are installing both on the same machine then we need to change either jenkins port or apache tomcat folder uh, sorry port because uh, if both port will remain same then there will be a conflict and uh, tomcat will not work on the same machine where jenkins is running so i have placed one command by which we can change its port so that i'll discuss so in order to install apache tomcat firstly we need to learn certain uh, linux command so it's a sudo update in order to update the packages then we need to use sudo apt install in order firstly we need java for it so we'll install java then we need to create a directory uh, so i'm using a user cloud admin so if you are using certain different user you can make modification according to that and firstly we need to create a directory so hyphen p is a switch by which we can create this multiple directory structure in a single command and ch mode is basically we are giving permission to this tomcat1 directory 755 so these are basically three this divided into a three permission uh, parameter so first seven is for your owner then for group then for others so for owner it is complete uh, read write execute but for other it is only read and execute so it is five so for read we give four for write we give two for execute we give one so combination of these three is seven and combination of read and execute is five that's why i have used seven five five then we need to go to this particular directory then we need to w get its star and then we need to untar this star after that we need to change ownership of this particular apache tomcat uh, 8.5.24 folder so i have used this ch own command so this will change the owner and group permission to cloud admin and hyphen r is basically recursively so it will change permission of all the folders inside apache tomcat 8.5.24 all folders or files will get permissions change because of this single command otherwise we need to run uh, individual command for each file and then i'm copying this tomcat hyphen users.xml file so certain modification is required in this user.xml and context.xml file so i have placed it on uh, my repository so i'll directly get cloned uh, from repository and then replace it to the configuration so that we don't need to do manual configurations and then we need to run a sh command by which we'll do startup.sh script execution and it will start our tomcat server okay 
now we need to edit these two files in apache configuration as i told earlier that these files needs modification that's why i modified this file and placed on repository so that we can directly download from there and can uh, replace it to the existing file so basically in tomcat hyphen user file we need to provide username and password for tomcat console and roles should be enabled so this particular command user username password roles is uh, provided here so that these all should get enabled and uh, context.xml file we need to actually comment out one entry so that entry i have commented out using this not hyphen hyphen so this is edited and placed on source code repository so we'll download it from there and we'll replace to the existing file okay so this is our jenkins ci cd pipeline so uh, this jenkins ci cd pipeline will create step by step by using a sample pipeline provided from jenkins so in this way we can create our pipeline so what this pipeline is doing here so this is the syntax it will start from pipeline agent enemies it will run on the master only but if we want to execute in not some other slave or some other machine then we need to change it to agent and then that label of that particular slave we need to provide so i have discussed and detailed and i have created multiple examples related to that slave and other things so if you are not known to those slave related things so just go to my jenkins playlist there i have placed multiple videos related to the same i have also discussed this pipeline earlier but those who are new i'll discuss it again because this is the main piece that we generate in jenkins and if you can generate this code then uh, everything can be easily automated uh, rest we only need linux commands properly so firstly we need to create stages inside stages we are having stage then we are having steps inside steps we are having the main command and similarly a single stage uh, can be can not only be placed inside stages in, in stages we can place multiple stages so we'll firstly create a stage for checkout code it will check out code from this source code repository then we'll use install maven build tool stage so here we'll install maven first third stage we'll use for compilation of code so here in this code we'll use this maven command mvn compile and uh, post completion of this we'll test this sample application so come on, everything will remain same as that of compile sample application only the thing will get changed is the ambient test command previously we were using ambient compile command and we need to execute all these command from the directory where pom.xml is there so that's why i have given the name of this directory uh, here you can also see where lib jenkins workspace test address book because our pom.xml is placed here so that i'll show you once we'll clone the code and after that we need to package the sample application so that is also having only one change in command that is ambient package so we'll make it the change and next we need to upload the artifact so this is the main command that we'll use in order to upload the artifact so this complete command can be generated from pipeline syntax page that is provided from jenkins documentation site so i'll uh, tell you and i'll show you how we can generate this complete command and this command once get generate we can upload our artifact to the nexus okay after that we'll install apache tomcat server so those command that i have discussed there i'll use that there is one difference in the command if you'll see so i have replaced this port 8080 with uh, port 8082 because 8081 port is basically used by our nexus so here i have placed 8081 but i'll use 8082 for uh, your apache 8081 is already the by default port for your nexus so we don't need to make any kind of conflict in ports so that's why i'll change this port so 8080 port will be for jenkins 8081 for nexus and 8082 will be for your tomcat server so once tomcat is getting installed then we need to deploy the sample application that is getting built as an artifact so what we need to do we'll just copy this application to this web apps directory so this is mainly the directory from where the application gets served so we'll copy that particular war file to this particular web apps directory and once it is getting done we need to start our tomcat server so startup.sh we need to start it with cloud admin user only because uh, jenkins whenever we perform any command then this get uh, created with jenkins user but once you will do it with jenkins user it will not get start because that machine user is basically the cloud admin user so we need to use this particular command so run user command so this command said that please execute this particular command with this particular user so that's why i have used it because if we'll use with any other user that is not there so 
this will not get uh, start your tomcat process and application will not get be shown in the console so guys now we are done with the theory session so i hope everybody got understood with the things but if you are not got understood with the theory piece so once uh, we'll do this um, complete uh, live session related to the practical things related to this particular example so everything will get clear uh, once we'll see practically it so let's start our practical demo now okay guys so i have installed this jenkins already so those who don't know how to install it so i have placed one video for installing jenkins in my jenkins playlist so you can check it out from there and now this jenkins has been installed and this instance is basically i have created on azure cloud so first what we'll do we'll open the ports on this particular machine so 88 is already open because jenkins has been installed now we can go to network settings and here we can go to create inbound port rule and then we can go for inbound port rule so here we can change the port 8080 and rest all settings we can keep it as it is we can click on add so now 8081 port is open our second port that we need to open is the port 8082 that we'll use for tomcat so we'll go to the same position inbound port rule and we'll open another port that is 8082 so it is open now we can go to network settings and here we can see that now 8080 8081 8082 all ports are open so one piece is done so jenkins is not required as of now firstly let's install nexus so i have copied certain instruction here in this notepad so we'll execute it one by one in order to install nexus so i'm installing it on the same machine so it is the machine where our jenkins master is also installed so that's why i have changed it port from 80 82 80, 82 for apache tomcat so the second command i'm executing it fast so that it should go fastly so certain commands we need to execute in order to install this nexus so let's install first i'm showing this uh, because so that you can aware that how to install this nexus first and then we'll configure it using its console okay this is also done now we need to extract it looks like i have cutted the command so rather cut it i need to copy it okay so here also we need to do sudo because it won't work without sudo okay so there is certain problem i copied it for two times that's why it is coming for two times every time so it should be till here let me copy this command again otherwise it will be an issue copy and then with sudo we need to execute okay. so now it is extracting it is done after that we need to move it to this folder copy it paste it that is also done now we need to add nexus user here so we'll run this command it will ask for password so you can give any password put enter again put enter and then put enter 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 and last you can put yes so this is also done now after that we need to give permission to this particular file because we'll add nexus and jenkins user here 
because we don't want password to get asked for these two users so that is a prerequisite otherwise our installation and certain commands from Jenkins will get fail so that's why I'm doing it so here we need to make entry for Nexus as well as for Jenkins all so same entry we need to do no pass wd colon all so basically what we are doing that whenever this user do anything then password should not get asked for for these users otherwise our pipeline script will get stopped whenever there there will be an asking of password so we make uh, this kind of uh, setting in sudo file so that uh, these users can do their thing without asking password so what we need to do we need to just make username first like nexus then all equals to in bracket all no pass wd colon all similarly for jenkins all equals to all no password uh, no pass wd colon all so this setting is done we can save it with colon wq okay so this has been saved now we need to use lowercase letter that's why it was giving some error so this is also done now we need to now change the ownership of this particular directory first so just paste it and then we need to change ownership of this directory also so just copy paste this command it will work it is done now after that we need to edit this particular file where we need to make entry of our nexus user here so what we need to do we just need to open this file and we can see that hash is placed here so we firstly need to remove hash from the front and then in red quotes we need to place nexus user name here so it is done now so this is saved also and after that we need to go to this particular file so here we need to also make one entry so just press i to insert something and we just need to copy this complete content here copy and then we can paste it here so we can remove this space and we are done so this is also saved now so our last command is to just start this nexus process so let's see whether everything goes well with these command then only this process gets starts let's see whether it start or not yes this process is started so we are not seeing any error otherwise it will give some exit uh, code related error if there is anything missing so this process is now started so we can wait uh, for a minute or something and then we can try access it using 8081 port so just wait for some time and uh, what is the IP so we can go to our machine we can go to overview we can take public IP address from here and here we can place this IP and then we can put 8081 port and let's see whether it got set up or not so looks like it is getting set up in the back end so wait for some time then we can see whether it got up or not so usually it takes some time so these are basically certain uh, linux command that i found out on internet so if you'll search you'll find out these commands uh, so that you can set up nexus so once this nexus will get set up then we'll try access nexus and then we'll create a repository over there and once that repository will get created then we'll proceed with our uh, pipeline code so it takes some time so give it some time okay so now we can see that uh, sona type is getting successfully uh, successfully executed and this is the portal firstly we need to click on sign in and it will give you the location from where we can get the admin password so just copy it 
till here copy and we can do a cat command here and then paste it so now very carefully we need to pick up the password because this from cloud admin user this and this machine name this is not the part of the password password is just before the user so this is the password till number 92 and we need to avoid this cloud cloud admin we have copied now so we can go here we can use our admin username admin and the password we can place it here and then we can go for sign in so we are in now so let's go to this complete this wizard we can change password of admin user now so it will get error but uh, don't worry just place the password that you want to give and just go for next okay and here it is saying like uh, enable anonymous access means that by default any user can browse and do anything but we don't want so we'll disable this anonymous access should be chosen with care as it will require credential for all users for any kind of build related tools so go for next and the setup is finished so now we can see that we are inside this particular sona type with admin user we can see we can go to the setting option we can click on repository and here we can click on create repository here we can search our maven2 hosted repository we can give repository name so test repo zitri so test a repo repository spelling is correct okay after that we'll go with version policing as a snapshot in today's demo so we are selecting it and we'll keep all other option as it is and we'll click on create repository so that is fine now we can see test repository is created with hosted maven2 default and it is online so uh, we are done with sona type settings now we need to go to jenkins and then we need to uh, do uh, the things related to jenkins so by default nexus plugin is not there in your jenkins console so you need to go to manage jenkins and here we need to install plugin related to your nexus so we need to click on plugins then we need to click on available plugin and here we can search for nexus so we are seeing nexus artifact uploader so we can click on it then we can click on install so here we can see everything is success so this plugin is installed now we can go to jenkins dashboard and here now we can go to new item we can give any name here but i use test because i have set it this uh, configuration related to this test project only if you want any other project you need to modify your file according to the project name so i'll go with test then i'll select pipeline and then i'll click on ok so here scroll down till end and here we are having try sample pipeline uh, related uh, drop down box here so click on it click on hello world so this is basically a declarative syntax sample pipeline showed here so in order to create a pipeline just copy it and just start creating pipeline from this particular sample syntax so this is the new notepad so just paste this code here so we'll build up complete pipeline from this sample code so first of all we need to change the stage name because we want checkout code so just change it with checkout code okay and what steps we need so we firstly remove everything from here and how we can create step related to checkout so what we need to do just scroll down you will having a one link with pipeline syntax just click on it it will open in a new tab so this is basically the section or documentation provided from jenkins side so here we can uh, create syntax related to our pipeline so what we need to do we need to check out so there is an option of checkout from version control keep it here and we want git checkout so we need to keep it as it is and we need to use a url so i have created this complete pipeline so i'll copy it from here just copy the url related to the code where you are having your source code repository so if i'll browse it here 
so we can see that my code is placed here so i'll use this particular code so we can also copy this uh, url that i have placed from here so just let it be like this and we need to place it here first and it is a public repository so we don't need to provide any credentials and we need to firstly go and check which branch it is it is a main branch so by default it mentioned here as a master we need to change it to main okay all small case and then we can click on generate pipeline script so this is the command just we need to copy and then we can place it here so in this way our first stage is successfully created similarly we can create our another stage so that's basically a stage in order to create download or in order to install your maven so this is my complete pipeline i'll copy it from here and i'll place it here then i'll explain what it is doing so here in this last two braces we need to leave as it is and we need to place stage before them because these two braces are for what one is for pipeline one is for stages so these two remain as it is all stages should come under stages braces so that's why we need to place it here so place it here so what this command is doing basically sh is used in order to execute any command on linux we use sh if we are doing it on windows we need to use bat here so it is just w getting this particular tar and it is just untarring this particular tar from there so it will download it and untar it and then the apache maven will get installed okay the third stage that we are seeing here is compilation of code so we'll just copy it and we'll do the same thing we'll leave these two braces and just place it here okay so this is the third uh, command that is compile sample application so we need to execute maven compile command here that's why we need to execute it from uh, var lib jenkins workspace test address book address book main directory because here we are having the pom.xml that i can show you uh, if you'll go to this repository here if you'll go to address book inside it so here we are having address book main and here we are having this pom.xml so basically we are going to use this pom.xml here okay and i have placed this jenkins file here also so it is having uh, most of the content related to this pipeline here but uh, there is missing step of uh, this nexus because i want to show it from sample pipeline so i haven't placed it so if you want to get these steps uh, copied so you can copy it from here and now our compilation piece is done so we need to place this test sample application so this is actually the same stage so what we need to do we can copy this particular stage itself only and just we need to change the command from the above stage so what we need to do we can copy the same stage here just we need to change the command so it is test and then we need to change the name of the stage also because in jenkins we cannot make two stages with the same name so we need to change the name of the stage else your pipeline will get fail let make it with a small letter also so that consistency should remain same so it's a checkout and then it's a quote okay so this is done testing of the application is done and after that also the next stage is stage for packaging so we'll copy it again we'll paste it here and then we'll change the command will p a c k a g e package okay and here also we'll change the stage name with package sample application okay now next stage is uh, if i'll go to our pipeline next stage we are having is the upload a uh, nexus artifact so how we'll create uh, this particular stage here so let's copy the previous code same for packaging and copy it control v 
so here we'll change the name so it will be we can say like uh, upload our defects to nexus okay now uh, we need to remove this command because this is a packaging command we don't need it and we'll change our directory uh, also so we'll go under target because we know that uh, once we'll package it there will be a target directory created and we'll be having war file inside it so we'll upload uh, from there because uh, if we'll not give the complete path pa the war will not be visible to this particular stage so this is now done let's create how we can create this artifact upload step so that's a big step so let's create it from here itself so here what we'll do we'll select nexus once we install plugin after only we'll see the nexus related step uh, here so here it's the nexus artifact uploader nexus artifact uploader we can click on it and then we need to select nexus 3 because we have installed nexus 3 http will remain as it is what is the nexus url so nexus url will be the url uh, by which we are accessing nexus so that url is having the same ip so we'll copy it from here and we'll paste it here after that we need to use port number so it's 8081 it is running so we are accessing and here we need to provide credentials of our nexus repository so as of now there is none we can click on add we can click on jenkins and here we need to provide username and password or of our uh, sorry jenkins not we need to give username and password of nexus um, um, admin so i'm giving nexus admin username password whatever i have set it so i'm giving that password whichever i have changed and in id uh, i'm giving this nexus hyphen sorry credentials so nexus hyphen credentials whenever you create any uh, username and password always give this particular id name because if you'll not give it will give you a some hexadecimal code uh, generate will be here and you'll not be able to identify that in your command from where it came so i'll show you where it will be shown in the command so i have uh, made it as nexus hyphen credentials okay we are done we can do an add so we can see credentials has been created so we can select that credential here okay fine in case of group id and in case of version um, we can give the group id from pom.xml also but there are multiple group id is given over there so we can ask from developer that what uh, of the parameter we need to give it here so we can check it with developer they can provide these things so the syntax should remain like this we can say we can keep it like this so this kind of folder structure will get create in the nexus so these uh, things can be provided from their side so no need to get worry or we can pick it up from pom.xml also but there we are having multiple group id and versions so we are not sure what needs to be picked so that developer uh, can tell us what we can set it here so this kind of a structure usually they provide so i have keep this particular syntax as it is in version we can give version like this and as it is a snapshot so i'll place it here okay so in this way we can give version and repository so repository we need to give name of the repository that we have created so it should be exact same name so i have created test or repo tree t so it is the same name after that we need to click on artifact we need to click on add artifact id we need to provide any id so we can give test artifact id so once this artifact will get upload i'll show you that where it is getting populated over there so test artifact id it is done type we need to provide we can click on this question mark and we can see what we need to provide so it is saying extension of the artifact uh, we need to provide just like artifact.zip then the extension is zip so in our case we are using application.war so our extension is war we can give it here classifier we can leave it as it is file name we need to provide which file should get upload as an artifact so in our case 
the file that will get create is this particular file so we can give it name here okay after that we can click on generate pipeline script so now this is the complete command that we are going to use in our pipeline and this will be used in order to upload artifact we can see that this is a very big command but due to this documentation everything got very easy and uh, things can be easily created because this uh, syntax creation documentation is very helpful so we can go here and here we can put simply put this complete command so this will be used in order to upload artifacts to nexus okay and when this is done we are now moving to our next stage so which is basically this tomcat prerequisite installation so this prerequisite is required for tomcat because whenever we want to install tomcat then java has to be there so we need to add this particular stage so leave this last two braces as it is and put that stage here so firstly it will install uh, java and then it will proceed with your tomcat installation so next stage is here for installing tomcat so here we can see like we have modified the port from 8080 to 8082 because otherwise there will be conflict in our pipeline so we can go here and we can place that stage here so it will install tomcat server and uh, here we can see that keep it here so that uh, this is this is a trick in order to make everything syntactically correct that last two braces should not get hit and we need to place stage step by step using this syntax so we will not copy now last two braces and this is basically for deployment of your application so we'll place it uh, where yeah here so here we'll place it so in this way we can see like uh, the complete pipeline is easily created just we need to be very sure about the commands linux commands that we are going to use so once those commands are handy then just we need to place sh and this single quote we need to place and a command we need to place we can place inside it there is one more thing if you found out some command which is already having single quote on it just like this command i found out on internet and it was having single quote in var and startup.sh before and after so we need to replace it with double quote because due to parsing single quote outside and single quote inside will not work so if we are placing this single quote outside which is syntactically the process in jenkins so we need to replace inside single quote with double quotes so that parsing error should not comes to us so now we can see that we have created this complete pipeline firstly it will check out the code then it will install maven build tool then it will compile sample application then it will test sample application then it will package sample application then it will upload artifacts to nexus then it will do tomcat prerequisite installation after that it will install apache tomcat server and then it will deploy application to tomcat server so now let's copy this complete code okay and then we can go to our jenkins test job we can remove old code from here and we can place our new code so if there will be any error we see a red cross here but we are not seeing it means we are syntactically correct but still if we are having some issue then this pipeline will not get execute so let's save it and let's see whether it works or not so here if we'll click on this build now this will tell us whether syntactically it is correct or not if pipeline start executing so as of now we can see that pipeline started so syntactically we are correct so firstly it is checking out the code then it is installing maven build tool now it is compiling sample application so if we'll go here so here we can see that it is downloading downloading this particular so these are dependencies that it is currently downloading from internet because we haven't placed any proxy as of now but in organization it will not get directly downloaded from internet rather it will go via proxy and then it will get download so we don't need to get involved in those things because those are getting set up by nexus admin or something so as a devops engineer we basically automate this process uh, so we just ask them to give us a repository where developer want their artifacts to get stored 
and all that backend configuration is already done by admins nexus admin so we'll just do in order to execute the things on that so here we now can see compilation is done and testing so similarly in case of testing it will ask for some plugin so here it will be downloading mainly the surefire plugin it download in case of testing so that we can also see here like surefire junit surefire grouper so it download plugin related to testing is basically the surefire now we can see that packaging of sample application is also done so it download uh, the things related to packaging over there and after that we are also seeing uploading uh, artifacts to nexus is also done so we are good with it also and then tomcat prerequisite installation then installation of tomcat server and then deploy sample application to tomcat server is done so firstly let's verify that whether the artifact is getting created on our nexus repository or not so we'll go to repositories so here we need to go to this browse section first button then we need to go to uh, this particular browse button on the left side and then we need to click on this repository so here like we can see the structure that we created com test app inside it the artifact id that we have given then the version that we have given and inside that version we are seeing this particular folder so if we'll click on this particular folder so here we can see like this artifact is created with this version 2.11 and this particular is 2023.11.23 is the date and after that it is a timestamp and then 1.war so this is the artifact that now successfully be uploaded here so we can also check it from logs that what get happened during this upload so if we we'll go to console output and uh, here we can see the artifact section here so just scroll it down okay so it is still downloading the dependencies so dependencies are now downloaded and then after that there should be something related to nexus so yes so this is the particular stick once the build is successful for your application so this application is coming to the same path that we have given over there and under target folder we are seeing this particular war so why we give this particular uh, path because this was the path where jenkins is getting creating workspace and this test is basically the name of the pipeline that we created so if you create pipeline with any other name then the path will get changed from this particular test to some project name whatever you gave it over there then we are having code inside that we are having this main folder then this target folder get create after packaging command and then this is the war so we need to upload this particular war so here we can see that once this uh, nexus upload artifact step executed once it started it found out group id artifact id type war version file and repository is the test repository then it started downloading related to some dependencies from there and once it get downloaded it start uploading this particular war so here we can see like uploading artifact address dot war completed so it is uploaded with the name test artifact id 2.1.1 .1 .1, then the date then the time and then hyphen one dot war so in the in this case if another uh, upload will get done for the same file then there will be a change of this timestamp like date like timestamp and hyphen one will get replaced with hyphen two so in this way we are seeing that now artifact is uploaded and now we can access our tomcat server whether that tomcat server is accessible or not so how we can check we can copy this ip we can place this ip along with 80 82 port and here we can see tomcat is successfully installed we can go to manager app so it will ask for credentials so these are the same credentials that we have provided in our tomcat-users.xml file that i showed in our slide so we'll use it here okay let me put the password from that tomcat-users.xml file Okay, so now we are inside our Tomcat server and this is the application 
that we deployed to web apps directory if we click on it so this is basically our address book application where we can add contact so we can click on new contact we can provide anything here so just placed any first name any last name and any number you can give there is no checking so randomly you can place anything here so you can give any id here there is no checking so we can place as it is and the birth date we can give okay yesterday date we can give here we can click on save so once we do it we can see that that name got added in the top okay and once we'll click on it it will give it things here so we can change first name here like first name also and if we'll save so we can see that that got changed uh, the test got changed from the that particular entry so this is basically the application so that application may be anything because developer can give us any application but in order to show end-to-end -end demo i have used this application so guys uh, i'm done with today's video i hope now you are understand that what nexus is how we can upload artifact why they are required and uh, how developers can get it download and can use it and uh, how they can check it from there so guys i'm done with today's video i hope you like this video if you like this video, please uh, subscribe to my channel and I'll see you in my next video.